Well, hello, I'm Chris, and this is my GM One Wire 100 Amp Alternator Upgrade video. We're going to set everything up. I'm going to give you a real good idea how to put it on your car. Now, this video is meant to be used as a guide. I'm going to show you the way that I do it so that you can research and figure out the way that you want to do it on your car. You don't have to do everything like I'm doing. This video is just meant to be used as a guide. Now we are going to set it up and put it on my car towards the end, but at first we need to discuss and talk about this one wire alternator so that you really know that this is what you want to buy. Now this video is going to have a bunch of information, so if you're new at this or you're trying to figure this stuff out, please watch the whole video. I uh, just wanted to show you what the one wire looked like. They just have that plugged, a little data sheet. That's all it comes with. So that's what the alternator is. Let's talk about it real fast so that we understand what we're getting into. Okay, so the first thing is that in 73, they went to internally regulated alternators and that's what this is. Okay, so 72 and older systems used a voltage regulator. You gotta get this out and you gotta convert the system. The easiest way is you just pull the regulator out and jump this plug. So if you jump this plug over and it's not working or causing problems, it don't get mad at me, the wiring in your car has been screwed with. This works 100%, check my videos out on it. Okay, so the next thing, this is the 10 SI case and it appears correct and it's fine to use on 55 through 85 uh, Chevy V8s. So they have a three o'clock if the alternator is mounted on the passenger side and on the older cars, they mounted it on the driver's side and you would have a nine o'clock. So pay attention to that if you have a, a like 68 and older so you don't have the uh, lug on the wrong side. So the next thing and probably the most important is that you lose your gen or charging light feature on a one wire alternator. And if you don't know what that is, I have a video uh, watch before you buy one of those so that you really, really see what is going on with that charging light. Okay, so if you don't watch the video, the point is to go out there and study your car and check for little lights like this. Now, my 70 Chevelle does not have a charging or gen light, so that's why I'm putting it on my car. My car has an ammeter or amp meter. Now, if you don't really understand what this does and what this gauge means, if you've ever seen one, it has a zero in the middle. Okay, so if your generator's charging or alternator's charging, everything's good, that means you're charging your gauge is going to be reading above zero somewhere right here now if we add an amp and cooling fans to our car and all of a sudden our charging light comes on what that means is that our system is not being charged We're, we got too much of a draw on our small alternator now we are discharging so our gauge will start reading like right here okay and that's why our gen or battery light comes on because we are no longer charging the system and this also happens when your alternator goes bad and what that battery light means is if you're discharging you're not charging the battery is you're actually using the juice up in your battery so if this battery light comes on and it stays on you're eventually just going to drain your battery dead that's going to cause all kinds of problems now my car has an amp meter i just got to deal with that but this gen light or battery light has saved me two times uh, from possibly ruining my whole day um, going off and me driving to an auto zone or O'Reilly and buying a new alternator because my alternator went bad. So if you have that light, you should really think about it before you buy the one wire. Okay, so we have a one wire alternator. We lost our charging gen light feature. Now you can add it. And the way you add it is 11 volt test module. Now search this for one wire, you know, dummy light, charging light, 11 volt test, and you'll find it at some company like American Auto Wire or something. This is gonna cost you about 30 to $40. Okay, so you're gonna wire that up to your dummy light, and when that voltage drops down, it's gonna turn your light on. Okay, so of course you can add it, but the problem is cars like my 70 Chevelle, this is supposed to be a printed circuit board. It may be difficult to go in there and try to tap into the printed circuit board. So older than 69, a lot of them just had individual dummy lights so that you could probably wire that into a, you know, older than a 69. Okay, so we give up our gen light feature with the one wire. And in my, before you buy a one wire video, this guy was telling me that that's not true, that he has a one wire for seven years on his car and the gen light, battery light works 
100% perfectly fine. Now I'm not going to argue with somebody when they're telling me something like that because I have seen this too. The problem is that people that say stuff like that, they cannot draw you a wiring diagram or show you or tell you how it's wired for a million dollars. Now we're going to draw something real quick. And this isn't for that guy if you're watching this video too. This is just the general idea just so that we, we really understand why we're sacrificing the gen light. So a lot of these GM cars with dummy lights, they have a common tan comes on with the key. It's a hot 18 gauge wire that supplies power to all these dummy lights. The, the way the dummy lights work is it's going to have a wire going to a sensor and whenever this temperature sensor gets too hot, basically all it does is it grounds out, completing the circuit, turning on your dummy light. Okay, so on the gen light, what happens? We turn the key on, it's going through there, going to our external regulator, and it comes out here and goes to the number one, exciting the alternator. A light's gonna turn on. So then what happens is as soon as this thing starts charging, it's gonna interrupt this wire and turn our light off. Okay, so the way that this is wired at this plug is usually the plug that goes right here, but now we have a one wire, so we don't use this plug at all. So we turn it on, and let's say we still have the regulator in it. <clears throat> that wire usually goes over here to blue to excite it, and now it's not hooked up to anything. So this light should not even come on. And now let's say we unplug the regulator. Now the gen light doesn't even go to anything. So how in the world is this gonna work at all? And let's say that we go ahead and put the two jumper wires like I showed you. That's all you're doing. And still, if this isn't plugged in, how in the world is this light coming on? Okay. The fact is that it's not coming on. It's wired up to something else. Something screwed up in your car, but that light, there's no reason for it to work. So the point is that if you are running a one wire alternator, there is nothing connected to that light, no matter how you look at it. So your gen light is not going to work with the one wire. Okay. So the only thing that I can even think of if your light is coming on or claiming that it's working with the one wire is that possibly you have your temp gen or oil pressure dummy light switch because the oil pressure light will come on when you first start your crank your car and then it'll shut off as soon as it gets pressure but i'm not 100 percent sure but if you have a one wire your gen light is absolutely not working so we need to talk about wire size so my 70 chevelle right now has a 53 amp alternator and most of these pre-fuel injection pre-cooling fan pre-computer cars have number 10 wire already in there for the charging system so if you have an alternator like this you can go ahead and do a 75 amp upgrade without changing anything just change the alternator and you'll be good but just make sure you have number 10 wire and you should have it but just make 100 percent sure nobody has went back and changed it now this chart is what i would consider the minimum wire you would want to run and since you're doing an upgrade a good idea is to go ahead and go a size or two bigger if that's not a problem for you so we know our 100 amp needs a number eight wire but let's go a step or two up so this is what we have in our car number 10 i got some number six right here and i also got some number four right here so the number four would be two sizes up okay, and compared to a razor blade you see how the sizes change Okay, so we're out here looking at the car to get an idea of what we're going to do. This job is about 95% planning and preparation and about 5% installation. We're going to do the install on it, but we need to kind of get an idea of what's going on here so we know exactly what we need to buy. So this is a factory wiring. I redid all the wiring 100% original. So we have our negative to our battery. It goes right here and straight to the block. That's factory style. Our charging wire loops over it's factory style comes to a junctioning block we got another red coming off of the battery so we're going to add a junctioning block for our new bigger power wire because we don't want to screw with that one and also it's too small okay so as far as this car having uh, chassis grounds it's got two grounding straps from on each side that go back there to the firewall and those are probably like number 10 wires and it has two okay so the 70 chevelle is actually pretty easy because all the charging wires are pretty much in this little circle right here 
the big three big four is the idea is kind of what we're doing to this car we're going to be doing the big four now the big three i'm pretty sure the origins are car audio and what that is it's a kit with all the ends everything that's going to allow you to run zero gauge it's going to upgrade all the grounds and power cables we'll show you and zero gauge to run a 250 amp alternator now i'm pretty sure i don't know for a fact but i'm sure you can get that in number two number four different kits but that's the idea of the big three is to upgrade your charging system kind of like what we're doing right now okay so this is the 70 cheville wiring existing we got a number one cable from the negative side grounding the engine that's that's good we don't have to mess with that okay we had 10 gauge charging wire to a junctioning block back to the positive side of our battery this is going to have to be changed we got two 10 gauge grounds for our chassis now we may have to add a ground but the big three pretty much is you're upgrading your chassis ground right here you're upgrading this you're upgrading that and you're upgrading the charging wire right here so that's what the one two three now the big four is they started figuring out i don't know who figured it out but the alternator cases the ground and you see how they usually have brackets nobody officially like sanded those down and made an official ground they're just kind of bolted up and it should be a 100 percent legit ground but that's what they're th they're saying is that this needs an official ground so the big four is basically we are adding uh an official ground in on mine i'm going to ground it back over here straight to the battery okay so do we get it that that's the one two three four that's the big four you got to upgrade this system so we know what we have now we need to plan out our parts list so that we buy exactly what we need we said that the ground here is fine we don't have to worry about that one okay so this system currently has a, a junctioning block but this is a small stud i think it's a number 10 screw and it's currently what's in the car now when we upgrade our charging system wire we can't use that anymore because it's too small so we're going to have to add a junctioning block over here now we're adding this because we need a bigger stud on here 5 16 to 3 8 we're going to run a wire over here we're going to be running a, a little piece over here to the old junctioning block to power it and then we're going to be running a cable over here back to our battery and the reason you do this because if you can imagine a power line the wire coming straight off the pole running straight to your tv that's the whole point of the junctioning block it's a, like a little breaker box so we run accessories off of that and fuse it so we don't have a whole entanglement of crap on our positive side of our battery and we're going to run our fuse to our amp straight off of that that's why you want to add a junctioning block and we're going to go ahead and upgrade a chassis ground too and then for our four we got to figure out how to put a ground on this alternator case back to our engine right here so we're going to make a, a ground we got to figure out how to do that for our alternator case okay so i went to get the measurements and i was looking at those ground straps they're both like at least number eight wires we only need one number eight for a ground upgrade so we got two so we don't have to worry about that anymore so if we need four foot there we need 2.5 feet here so now we know we need nine feet of cable okay so now it gets tricky because you got to figure out what terminals you need we're going to be using the correct heavy duty style terminals so you're going to have to go to electric supply or order these online so we need to figure out exactly what we need because these things cost a dollar dollar fifty two dollars a piece so we have one right here this is number four we have a quarter inch stud we have a small stud so it's very important that we don't get one that's too big sorry one five sixteenths where it goes to the alternator and we got a three eighths bolt right here so we need terminal right there we're writing them out so that when we go down the line we know exactly what we need to order now this might just seem like a bunch of crap and i'm wasting your time but i promise you when you do your project you need to do something like this so you know exactly what you order and i'm about to show you why okay so this is the wire we're going to be using some power cable i pulled off of my truck when i first got it now this is very important to pay attention to this okay this uh 
came from some car audio place and you see the way that these power cables were crimped now the only thing they did right was that they used uh, the thick heavy duty ones but that crimping job right there um, that's that's pitiful that's not what you want especially on a charging system with your new alternator okay so i'm making two sets of cables probably going to sell one set this is some number six wire right here we're going to make the other set out of and these are some terminals i got with a amp kit amp installation and see they're number six terminals and everything but for our 100 amp alternator upgrade this is absolutely not what you want to put on here it might not burn up or melt or anything but it's this is too thin it's too light duty see how they got it right using heavy duty but they got it wrong with the crimps so i went to a car audio store looking for terminals and they had a whole bunch of these little thin ones like this these are for speakers do not put this little thin stuff on your alternator upgrade okay i just bought these just to show you that this is speaker these are speaker terminals these i got these at harbor freight if you absolutely cannot find any i was in a hurry trying to look for this stuff and i found these for the number four uh, but you see they only have one size what you really want is to go to an electrical supply store now the reason i was making that list right there to know exactly what you want to buy is because these cost 29 dollars for this and when you're doing your 100 amp upgrade or more you have to have a heavy duty official connector like this you cannot be playing games with this stuff right here okay so these are two three eight hole number six ring terminals and you tell me which one of these you want on your 100 amp or higher alternator you would be a damn fool to put this on your alternator upgrade so when you're crimping these you have to do them with a crimper see the two little blue lines see these jaws we got them set on six let's go ahead and crimp one just so we can get an idea what's going on this is uh going to be to our alternator so we're using our quarter inch so i just got it kind of stuck in there put the wire through it okay okay so we are going to put the heat shrink on them when we make our cables i just wanted to really show you the difference on a crimped in and whatever this mess is right here the reason we make our list because when you go to electrical supply you have to be specific and give them a list because they can't read your mind that 3 8 quarter inch that's the hole right there because we're going to be going through the alternator stud a junctioning block and then our 3 8 uh, bolt into the engine we're going to go through showing you crimping some ends and putting the heat shrink just so you get a real good idea how that's done okay so we got the number four ready to crimp okay okay so i was searching some crimping videos and there's people like trying to put solder in there and those holes you don't have to do that got our heat shrink put the heat shrink over it real good like that that's all you got to do you don't solder connections like this and okay, this job is truly 95 percent planning five percent install that's why we're doing 95 percent talking and discussion and we're about to do the five percent install so i've been working on this project for two weeks let's talk about any last things i can think of before we go put this on the car we're running a 100 amp alternator this is a factory junctioning block it has a real small number 10 screw in there so this is only good for up to 75 amps with our 10 gauge wire now we're running number four we need to get a junctioning block that's a, a bit heavy more heavy duty okay these are this is a delphi style you can look that up just type in delphi battery junctioning block i actually ordered this one too but it's being shipped right now because of the mounting uh, we have a weird shaped core support uh, both of these have a, a m10 which is about a 3 8 stud the point of these is that these are gm delphi factory style and we are going to permanently put this on our 70 chevelle so the last things you need to know that this alternator is internally regulated that means you do not use any kind of regulators you don't need that this alternator you can imagine has a little brain inside of it that's going to tell it when to charge when to stop charging you don't need anything that's why it's called a one wire okay number two 
this is the charging system is basically this wire going back to the battery that's your freaking charging system okay see we don't have any kind of regulator on there that's our charging system okay so in this car we got factory we added a bigger junctioning block the junctioning blocks are extensions of your battery this is your charging system this is an extension of your battery so the question is fuses where do i fuse we got a junctioning block everything that you run here from this is going to be fused or have your fuse link everything you run off of the junctioning block see extension of a battery you fuse right here all this stuff's going to go in your car we're not going to hook it up i thought we were but we got an amp fuse you fuse off of that junctioning block see it's got a little wire hole right here we got two big cables coming in one little wire hole coming out it's the point of the junctioning block I mean see fuses you can put fuses wherever you want I mean it doesn't matter do what you feel like doing but the point is charging system extension of battery they typically do not fuse anywhere in here so we got the wires cut ready to go on the car the only thing we're gonna do to them is we're gonna cover them with this protected plastic stuff this is 3 8 number four wire okay so all cars will be a little bit different but this is a 1970 Chevelle we're gonna start by taking the ground off of the block We don't need the factory alternator wiring at all. We're gonna completely remove it. Okay, we've already removed the battery because we're gonna mount our junctioning block somewhere right there on the We're gonna go ahead and remove the alternator and we're gonna put the new one back on. We gotta use that black spacer on there. Alright, pay attention to this that we took off. So it's a 10 SI, three o'clock position. We know it's 100% exactly the same case. Okay, just hand tight the spacer at first or it can uh, make it hard to align. So we're kind of putting these where they don't show at all. First wire is our quarter inch charging wire from our alternator going over our junctioning block. Junction block's gonna be over here somewhere. See, we're just getting it in place. Okay, so now we're gonna be doing the four, the big four upgrade where we ground the alternator case with an official ground. Okay, and a lot of people think that that hole on the back of the alternator is for a ground, but actually it's for your spacer. Your spacer bolts to it. The only place you can actually ground is right here. This is the screw or bolt that usually bolts it to the top bracket so we're gonna have to get creative here okay, so that piece of the alternator is threaded right here so we're just gonna put this little piece of all thread in there that way it's we're gonna be able to clamp right here and we're gonna be able to screw our official ground to this side of it now when you're using making official grounds we need to use these star things these are stainless things I got from Home Depot to ensure a real good permanent ground we're gonna use one here and one on the block see the stud goes in And see that stud through there now we can go ahead and permanently tighten our ground to this side and we're going to adjust it with just a nut and washers okay so we're using that start thing to ground a lock washer 5 16 nut go ahead and tighten it down The alternator case ground we just tightened it see it coming down we're going to join it back on the block with the original ground coming off of the battery okay yeah so the one wire does look cleaner but it's only because the way i have it mounted you see how i got that cable going in there coming out underneath we got our uh case ground right there real good back over here to the original ground on the block so the only thing I'm not gonna do in this video is mount this 
because I really don't know where I want to put it yet. I want it somewhere in this area, but we got a weird shape core support and I've been thinking about it. I don't have the inner fenders. They're over there. They're going back in the car and I'm probably going to wait till I do that. So I could probably mount that junction block somewhere under here where it doesn't show. But man, I've been trying to figure out where to mount it on that on that core support I, I don't really like anywhere on it because the only place is down there but it's not flat you want to mount stuff like this as professional looking as possible now in the diagram I was talking about running a little bitty tiny wire back over there to power this but I, I don't because I forgot the battery cable already has a wire feeding the junctioning block okay so the other cable So like I said, I ordered two junction blocks. I'm gonna wait till I get the other one to officially put this somewhere. But yeah, I kind of like that area. All we gotta do now is put the battery in and we gotta connect the last cable to the battery. So this is coming from the junction block and we're gonna have to put, we're gonna put this on the battery right here. Okay, last thing to do, put the ground back up. So it's on there. The only issue I really see is getting something to protect that. It's not cool to leave that hanging out. That's straight from your battery. You see our mocked up junctioning block. You'd want it in there, something like that. Okay, so on the terminal, we had to do this. We have no choice. We have to get a number four back to the battery post one way or the other. This way it's hidden, goes to the junctioning block, under there, back over here. Okay, so we did not upgrade our chassis grounds. It has two, looks like number eight wire grounding straps on both sides. Our ground was already a number one cable. So we only had to upgrade the charging wire and we added our alternator case ground. Plan your project ahead of time. Um, this one, we're gonna be doing vintage air for sure. I'm gonna be doing the fuel injection like that. I think it's FI tech or something doing that for sure. And if I have any left over, we're gonna do the cooling fans. And that's why I'm preparing myself for this 100 amp. Really don't see myself needing to go bigger, but if I do, that's why we went with number four wire. We can do the 140 amp with no problems. Now let's check this thing out charging. Let's see uh, when it kicks in. It's supposed to kick in around 1200 RPM. Okay, so I put the one wire on this car because it does not have a gen or battery light on it. Turn ignition on. See, that's brake for the emergency brakes. And remember I was talking about how you might have those switched. That's an oil pressure light. As soon as we start the engine and it builds pressure, our oil pressure is going to go off. So it is possible if your gen light is working that you have it wired to your oil pressure light. Okay, so with the one wire, you're going to use a voltmeter. We got ignition on. Let's see uh, what RPM this kicks in. It says 1200. So. About 600. Everything works out fine it actually does look a lot better like that everything looks good we can barely tell that it has a uh, number four wires in there uh, we got our junctioning block in case we want to run accessories like our amp anything off of that so I'm just trying to give you a real good idea how to go about your project the most important thing is the wires because if you have undersized wires here they're gonna start getting hot the insulation is gonna get real soft melt off and then cause all kinds of short circuiting problems. Protect your wires, make sure you run oversized if you can. Everything will work out just like it did on this car. So I've been working on this project for over two weeks. So if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.